where somebody just something locks in, something I said, a question I asked that they help do some self-discovery. I love them. So I hope I make one or two of those for you today. I'm also a mom. I have a two-year-old. Um, this is a very ironic day to be having this conversation because I talk a lot about um, how I refuel my tanks in this. And this morning I was like, I'm going to get up. I'm going to work out. I'm going to get in a better heads place. It's been a wild few weeks between work and family travel. And my nanny called in sick and she's amazing. Um, and she's never sick and she was sick. So it's been a wild morning. So um, this is good for me to also check in with myself and rebalance today. And um, I'm also, you know, looking to go on a journey here to have a second child in my in my 40s as an executive. I've had a ton, unfortunately, unfortunately, experience with a fertility journey and multiple egg retrievals and all sorts of wild stuff around fertility. And I, I openly talk about it because I think there's so many women out there that go through this and struggle with it in silence, but don't know how to navigate it and their career. So that is a sidebar. If anybody ever wants to talk about it, let me know. Um, I've absolutely been through every gamut piece of fertility for the most part, and I'm happy to give you some tips. But today is about um, one of the many struggles, journeys we all go on, and I think most of us have this um, challenge, but it was about me trying to figure out balance, and it's not necessarily maybe traditional balance, but how to make sure my energy tank was filled enough that I could sustain and really enjoy not only my outside life, but work. And um, that has been a challenge at times for me. And here's why. I am a type A personality. I've always been an A student. I want to please my boss. I want to knock it out of the park. I take a lot of pride in what I do. And so I'm an incredibly hard worker. Since I was 22 and started out in my career, I've been very aggressive and taking on as much as I can and absorbing and learning and getting mentors. And um, I've moved all along the East Coast. I did have a very quick trajectory into an executive position and was significantly younger than all of my peers. And um, I had a great career so far due to that ambition and all that hard work. But what I've found is that like most um, workers who take on a lot and in, enjoy getting recognized for it, more and more work came and my energy kept getting depleted and I would get resentful and burned out and I start to look for a new opportunity and I get a great opportunity and I take some time off and take it, but it kept happening. Um, and as I took on more and more, I was like, how am I going to sustain this? How am I, how am I going to get to the other things I want to do in my life? I wanted to become a mom. Um, I got married later in life. I wanted to find the right partner. And can you really do that and have a more senior role? And even when I took this job at SureScripts, I did not have a child at the time and got married while I was at SureScripts. And I was a little nervous about taking on a large role and really determining whether I could fulfill those other goals in my life. And so I started reading about 10 years ago. I started reading a lot of books. I started talking to a lot of men and women, and this is very applicable. I know this is a, a platform for mainly females, but if this is really applicable for anyone. Um, and so I talked to a lot of people trying to get advice on how do they get to senior roles and still enjoy their life and feel fulfilled. And it was really important to me because I also had a childhood where my mom died very yeah. early and suddenly and I thought gosh if I only live that long I don't want it just to be about work I want to have all these other pieces of my life and how do I do that and so it was um and still fulfill that career ambition I had and so of course you re who didn't read lean in um then I had talked to other people who talked about just lean out just just take a break um I talked to a lot of women who said you can have it all I don't think that's possible on a side note. Um, and I thought about, okay, just focus on one area, then I'll pivot and focus on another area. And maybe I go part-time for a while. I was struggling with, you know, I really wanted to be a mother and it's okay, by the way, if anybody on this call or anybody listens to it, doesn't want to be a mom. I also think there's way too much pressure on females to always have to take that path. Uh, but it was something I know I needed to do and wanted to do, not need. I wanted to do it. And the timing of that in my career. Um, do I need to be married to be a mom? What does that all look like? Then my whole fertility journey was fascinating. Um, how could I find this partner 
that um, could really be my peer. And a lot of people at my level, I was starting to learn, had a stay-at-home partner. They were the breadwinner and their partner would be the caregiver, take home, take care of the home, elderly parents, kids, whatever it was. And that wasn't my situation. I'm like, well, I, I need to get to know more people that have a working partner. Um, and also when you're single and you're in an executive position, how do you find someone that isn't intimidated by that ambition, um, which was a struggle I had along the way before I met my husband? And how do you juggle other things, ailing parents, other loved ones, all while trying to figure out your brand? How much do you really share about some of this struggle? Um, you don't want it to be your whole identity. You don't want to be too loud, but you also want to try to be authentic because, of course, everybody tells you to try to do that. So it was all this advice coming at me, and I was trying to sort through it. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to start real simple. Real simple. What is in my control? Um, what can, can I control in my day-to-day? to help me regulate and feel better about my energy level, my stress level, um, how I manage my day, what is in our influence, and then what's completely outside our influence. And I just started to create a list and better understand that piece of it. And I started there. Then I went on this journey around finding two core values. And it's interesting, I'll, I'll refer to this a little bit in the conversations. I hire a lot of executives. I helped hire a lot of executives throughout my career, just helped recruit a new CEO to SureScript. So I have a lot of experience with interviewing executives. And um, I think when you see a really successful senior leader, you see someone that does have some semblance of core who they are and their purpose, and also has started to figure this out. So I'm gonna intertwine that a little bit in the discussion. But I, I don't know if I could have said 10 years ago, this is, these are my two core values. These are my, this is my, these are my intrinsic motivators. These are the things that are my purpose and my core. And I can help, it helps me understand what's then going to give me energy and refuel me. And there's lots of authors that write about this and they call it different things. It's the why or the intrinsic motivator. Sometimes it's called the two core values, but you know, there's tons of great, amazing reads out there. It's not, Simon Sinek, Brené Brown, Rachel Hollis, lots of biographies. And um, I really needed to play in this space. So I went on this journey and tried to figure out what were my two major motivators. Another piece of this for me was I was an artist when I was younger, loved drawing, sculpting, painting. And I was starting to learn that as I was taking on more and as my stress level was rising or as I was juggling more, I was not thinking as creatively and outside the box. And that also leads to not thinking as strategically. And as you get more senior in your career, a big piece of your job are those aspects. And I needed to play with this a little bit. And so um, I read this book called The Artist Way. And I share it because it unlocks something for me. Each of you are different and it may not unlock as much for you. But it's this book and it's a 12 week journey of homework assignments during the 12 weeks to really just get back to your creative side and what you enjoyed even almost, even almost as a kid. I mean, I think one of the exercises is talking about what you enjoyed as a kid and just being playful again. And what I learned was I needed some space in my life for that so that I could just completely not think about anything else. My head was space was free. I was just I was just in the moment, which is so hard to do with all of the things that we juggle day to day. And I started, when I was starting to get more in touch with my creativity again, I started to be able to think more outside the box and get a little bit more creative and ultimately made me a better executive from a strategy standpoint. And so I put in some plugs because it may this may resonate with you, but also just to get, think a little outside the box, get a little creative. Um, you know, I had one person on my team and she may even be on the call where I suggested, I think you should just go to an improv class, get out start thinking a little differently. Um, it'll help you think more on the fly, but it also just, you have to be in the moment. It forces you to be in the moment. And I'm, I'm all for those types of things. Play a little bit and have some fun because it does make you a better, it does make you a better leader ultimately, but also just a more well-rounded person. So I'm going on this journey. I figure out my two values. So I'm gonna share mine. Yours could be completely different as they should be because um, we're each individuals. My two were growth growth in all aspects of my life. It was important that I'm always growing. 
growing and becoming and evolving to be a better mother, daughter, spouse, friend, um, on the physical aspect, challenging myself from an athletic standpoint, on a spiritual side, continuing my journey around meditation or faith or whatever, whatever falls under that category in the mental space, how I practice being in the moment, having those escapes, as I described, to allow myself to free up and be creative. So that growth aspect and growing in all those areas is a huge piece of my core value and what gives me energy, what helps refuel me. The other piece is this balance piece. And, and I'm going to talk about what that means to me. I think oftentimes we think of a traditional work-life balance. You clock in, you clock out, your life's separate, you then go home. That, as we know, just does not exist, especially as we get more and more virtual. Um, and so I'll explain what that means to me. But it was very important to me because as I shared, I did not want my identity to just be wrapped up in being one thing and certainly not being disproportionately towards work. I think it's a huge piece of me and my identity and my ambition, but I don't want it to be the only thing. And so I need to continually check in on that. There's a great article. This is where I start to get into balance. Um, and it's, it is old. I mean, it's a few decades old and I still think it's great. Called The Corporate Athlete. It's a Harvard Business Review article. And it goes into four aspects. And interestingly enough, when I talk to executives, when I'm interviewing executives and we look at um, different senior leaders, it's really, really nice to see that people have invested in these four areas as well. But for me, this is where my balance comes in. It is never perfect. Uh, I just shared this morning. Mine was completely out of whack and thrown for a loop. Um, but it's the physical. So how are you taking care of yourself? That could be as simple as sleep, getting some sort of cardiovascular activity, it could be going for a walk. It is physically making sure you are doing okay when you're not feeling well, getting sleep, not pushing through and grinding through for multiple days, if you can help it. Emotional. The emotional piece of this is checking in when you have triggers, when your stress level is incredibly high, making sure you're able to um, manage your emotions and regulate them. And there's all sorts of ways to check in on this. And I'm gonna talk about this in the next slide around emotions, but you typically know when you're getting more irritable and impatient, anxious, and um, when you're not enjoying things as much. So it's always making sure you have that emotional regulation you're, you're investing th in there. Mental is being in the moment, being able to focus, being able to think and having room to think beyond the exact task at hand and seeing the bigger picture, which is a huge component as you grow in your career, but also is helpful as a human being. And then the spiritual piece, that could mean religious or faith-based, but it could also just be as simple as understanding your purpose and those core values and being true to them. Another way to look at this, we had a great um, speaker come, and, and I want to be careful because he has a great speech about it, so I don't want to go too deep into this, but Steve Gutzler had this really great speech with us just even the last uh, year or two at church groups and it reminded me so much of the corporate athlete which was this great article that was out there and then i started to read more and there's a ton of people that talk about this but he did an energy assessment with us where he just asked questions in each of the categories and then you scored yourself and it was a bit eye-opening for a lot of people and luckily i was in pretty good shape around it because i've made so many investments but it helps you really figure out okay where is your energy and that tells a lot about then how that impacts your professional life, your personal life, and your relationships. And so I encourage you to play a little bit in that space. Um, so let me talk about why I put this in there. So I understand my core values. Balance is a huge other piece, as I shared those four quadrants. Um, I will say one thing about the quadrants. They're never all even. No one can get them perfect. Uh, there are weeks and months where I have not invested the right way in my emotional space or in my physical space, but I'm constantly reevaluating that to get it a little bit more in balance. And that's really when I show up best in all aspects of my life, including as a leader. Another thing that I have really gone through over the last few years, and this is applicable even if you don't have kids, uh, but if you were taking care of anyone in your family, is how do you approach things if you're a senior leader and you're a mom? And in my case, I'm a young mom. I have a two-year-old. 
that is very different. Most of the executives I work with are have kids in high school, college, out of the house. Um, and it's a whole different ball game when you have someone that's really young. It's also a whole different ball game, by the way, and I know it will evolve 12 times over um, at different phases of a child's life when you're lugging them around at 5,000 logistical activities and how do you balance all that. But I really needed to figure this out. I did not have a lot of role models in my life that I knew that were C-suite executives who had kids and small kids, really. And so one of my colleagues recommended this book. I loved it. I put a plug in for it, um, highly recommend it. It was a really positive outlook on how you juggle and manage your life, being a mom and being, being a leader and a working woman. And um, I haven't read a lot of positive spins on it. So um, it, one of the tips of advice is relinquish the quest for balance. And they were talking of a more traditional balance, not what I'm talking about. But it was basically develop your own definition, which my definition is what I just shared with you, of how you integrate work and family. And you know, one of the things I took away from it and the way that I absolutely promote it on my team and it accompanies what I would seek to work at is a company that does allow flexibility and really focuses on results. That way you can integrate both and be effective and you're not clocking in and clocking out. Um, I'm a firm believer that as long as you're getting results, you're getting your job done. I don't need to know and I don't care if you run out and watch your child play a sport or go to an activity or take them to the doctor or you go get a workout in, in the middle of the day. As long as you're going to the important meetings and getting your job done, it's incredibly important, I think, to figure out ways to integrate so that everything works. And for me, sometimes that means in the middle of the day, I need to go take care of something for today. My nanny's sick. So I will be devoting some some great time with my daughter during the day that unexpectedly I, I uh, will need to free up. And then I might do some work tonight, but that's OK, because I have the flexibility and that's what's important. The other key takeaway for me was and, and I needed to hear this. And some of you may know this and this may seem super obvious, but having it all is not attainable. Um, there's going to be moments where you're going to be killing one aspect of your life and just doing an amazing job and another aspect you're not going to be doing as well. And, and that is OK. You know, there's a societal or this um, pressure that having it all is actually achievable. Most of the time it's not. You're always going to have things that you're going to struggle with and you're going to evaluate each day and week and month. That does not mean that you're failing. It means you are human. Um, and so it is possible to continue to grow in your career. You just have to keep evaluating, juggling, and thinking through things. So it's this fundamental shift, letting others, not letting others prescribe how you do it. Um, and no one size fits all. So what works for me today is going to work very different for me five years from now because my family dynamics is going to be different and i might at that point um have different dynamics also with extended family that we need to help and support and take care of so it's also just knowing it, you just keep shifting and evolving you take one day at a time and i needed to tell myself that so that it wasn't like oh i don't think i could take this opportunity or this job because how am i going to do this five years from now don't worry about it. You will figure it out. You figure it out on a regular basis. I love this quote from Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I love Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, and I wanted to share it because I think it's a great call out. So she talks about law school and how she views that she was more successful um, at times than her peers, in proportion to her peers, because she had this moment where it wasn't just about law school. She had other priorities in her life and she devoted time to her child in law school, which was if you've ever read read about her life and seen movies about her life um, while she was in law school, most students are traditional uh, students who did not have a family and a child and she did. And she stopped working at four o'clock every day and gave a few hours to Jane and then would go back at it. And it was with a renewed will and she views that she actually was more successful because of that. And so it's just a nice reminder to me that stopping, pausing, walking away, it doesn't always matter how much time you put into a job. It matters when you're there, your approach to it and your energy towards it. And I think oftentimes we lose sight of that as not just women, 
but as people who uh, are looking for that next step, that it doesn't always matter the time you put in. It matters how, when you're there, the quality, but that energy that you put towards it. And there's a lot of very successful people that have figured out how to balance and figure it out. And, and you can too. And this goes into learning agility, how you adapt, how you keep flexing. This is a big trait that we I look for when I interview candidates, um, executives primarily, CEOs for sure. Um, Corn Ferry, I shared the Corn Ferry definition. I'm certified in Corn Ferry and um, learning agility. And I've actually used those assessments to hire general managers and different executives at other companies. And so I, I want to highlight it because as you're thinking about moving your career, as you're looking for those new opportunities, this skill is immensely, immensely valuable. And it is about the adapting piece. So it's the willingness and ability to learn from an experience and then essentially adapt then apply those lessons to succeed in a new situation. And so how this intertwines for me is, as I think about balance and as I think about juggling different aspects of my life. And sometimes that means devoting time to, you know, I, we all have older parents helping them with a health issue or a crisis at home, whether it's uh, being a mom, whether it's supporting a friend who's going through something. I have to keep adapting and changing my day, my schedule, learning about how to do things differently and be successful. Sometimes it's adapting my own leadership style and learning the ability to take an experience and learn and then pivot and take those lessons into the next experience is a skill that it should, everybody should invest in, practice, and look at. And there's a lot of information out there on learning agility, and I'm happy to share that at a different time. So we know change is the only constant. I've been talking about adapting, and that's a huge piece of the balance because you'll you'll never get it for long if you don't keep adapting. I did just want to talk a little bit about a change curve. This one is CCLs, and I think I actually lost the CCL reference. It was down in the corner, but I just changed the template. So apologize, CCL. Great, um, great company. I love Center of Creative Leadership. Um, but this is just a you can you can see these in many different forms. Lots of people show these. It's just a change curve curve essentially, and it's when you become aware of a change. And then how you get to the other side of it and commit and come up with your plan and really get to a positive place. And changes happen every single day. I had one this morning with uh, I had to quickly pivot when I found out that we didn't have daycare today. And so it's how you manage a change that helps you keep things in check, helps you manage and regulate your emotional state, uh, sometimes your physical state, certainly your mental state. And that helps keep things in balance so that you can show up at your best. And so I love, love talking about this piece. It's not the change. Usually people can get to the change. It's how you transition to it. Um, the change itself, sometimes you don't have a choice. You, you can't resist it. The change happens. Like, for example, this morning with me. Um, but it is how you get there. So it's your reaction. It's your emotional reaction, it's your psychological reaction, it's what you verbalize versus internalize. And so oftentimes we're adverse to the risk, annoyed by it, annoyed by the change, um, fear we're going to struggle through today, struggle through the day, the loss of the familiar. You may have failed in the past. And so you got to let go of all of that. Um, and in order for you to be successful in the future and find the balance and figure out what to do that works for you and still be successful as you grow in your career in order to have what I want to achieve at least, which is the other aspects of my life and feeling fulfilled, I had to work on transitions and how I process them, how quickly I process them and how do I support myself and have the EQ internally within myself, the emotional intelligence to be self-aware when I'm starting to feel certain triggers when I think about a change. And it helped me um, balance back out so that nothing felt as intense as it really um, usually is. I mean, usually things do work out one way or another. You put one foot in front of the other. And I think so many times as women, and, and men do this too as human beings, you're so afraid of the unknown that you underestimate yourself. 
Um, I'm sure this has come up in the first two talks. One of the things that I see is a lot of women don't apply for certain jobs or don't go for jobs because they haven't met all of the criteria or because they're worried about how they're going to juggle their personal life and um, jump in. It's all change. If this is all about change, it's a new job. It's a new opportunity. It's things you haven't done before. You'll figure it out. Most of the time, you absolutely will figure it out. It's how you make that transition, how you adapt, and how you keep things in check. And so um, I want to finish because I want to take questions, and I'm very conscious of that. I'm just looking at the time here. I promised I'd take like 35 minutes and we could ask questions and just share some of my lessons. Um, again, I, I am one person. I'm sure there are many things that you could share with me as well. I learn every day. But um, one, no one's figured it out. Don't let that hold you back from growing in your career, taking on more as your life gets more complicated. Your journey will change. It changes all the time. Learning agility is key in those transitions and change. Know your two core values because that helps you understand your purpose and what's going to give you energy. And then you can keep fueling, refueling by making sure those two core values you're given enough to so that you have energy. Check in with that energy assessment. See how you're doing in those quadrants that I talked about. It's a great way to better understand yourself and understand why you might be feeling a certain emotion or a stress level. And um, it will never be perfectly balanced, but it's still good. Like I knew my physical was down. I'm an athlete. I, I like to work out. I have not been able to devote any time to it for the last two weeks, which is a really long time for me. So today I was like, I am doing it. Um, so I'll check on myself tonight. And we're going to regroup on my physical. My physical needs to get back and check here. And then um, next is define and be clear on what work-life balance is for you at this stage. Um, it is, does not have to be what you traditionally think it is. Work-life balance for you could be getting an hour a day to yourself. Whatever it is, no judgment. Figure out what works for you and then start to try it. And then keep adapting as things get more complex. And know every woman is trying to figure it out. And man. You are not alone. No one has mastered it for long because life keeps changing. And so um, it does not mean that you can't achieve some semblance of energy and balance and have other things in your life and still get to the top. Every executive, every CEO is working through it each day too. So I'm going to pause there. I'm going to take down my screen um, and... I can take some comments or questions. Thank you so much, Caroline. I um, I think it is so interesting to think about it in terms of managing transitions because that gives you control over the situation. Um, in our last session, we talked a little bit about career risks and our conversation led to maybe if we stop thinking about it as a risk right thinking about it in terms of those things that we are controlling so i think you're just really echoing that and helping put it in a framework for us that is truly helpful um and you know the only other thing that struck me um i'm not sure if anyone on the call is also an avid netflix watcher but there is a new um show out or movie called schultz which is a a key therapist that is working and he talks a lot about how he rather than being a therapist that just listens he gives people the tools for immediate success and his biggest tip was that control of the physical as well so Really interesting synergy. I'll check and, it out. Yeah. And just pausing here to see if anybody, you know, feel free to raise your hand or put a question in the chat. Um, but I will kick us off. Um, can you share a time where you've had to have a bold conversation with either um, a peer or a boss about balance and any tips in terms of navigating that so that you're in control and really driving the outcome that you want to have? Yeah, I'll share two. One, um, I was, uh, when I was interviewing for this position at Sure Scripts, um, I was very transparent with the CEO at the time, who is, is an amazing mentor and friend, and he has since retired recently. But um, I said, I don't know if I want this job. And he's like, what are you talking about? He hadn't opened the position. They'd recruited me. Um, and I said, I, I think it's going to be lonely at the top. 
I'm worried about these other aspirations I have in my life. And I'm still, I'm still on this journey to figure it out, but I'm a little bit scared. And I was really honest about it. Um, in fact, most people would say, are you nuts? And I, I don't know how much of that is about my gender or just my personality. And I was very honest and real about it. And he said, well, what do you want to achieve? Let's talk about it. And I was really honest about my, my goals outside of just the professional. And we worked through it. And of course, he sold me on the job still. And he was exceptionally supportive. But what I learned through that, and as I had a child, um, you know, he said, what do you need differently? Is oftentimes if you ask for what you need, figure out what you need first so you know what you're asking for, you will get it. If you're a good performer, if you're working hard, they will figure out how to adapt. And if they can adapt, you can get creative on, okay, well, where can we maybe meet in the middle? So being bold and comfortable and having those discussions. If you have a leader that is not at all supportive, you need to also think about the organization you're in and if this is a long-term situation for you. Um, as long as they're realistic asking, you can't ask something wild, you know, if I asked to go to 10 hours a week, that's probably not realistic in my job. But, um, you know, think about that. I've also had times um, where I've had to be pretty bold about even just my fertility struggle and how I manage my work when I'm going to the doctor's office every single morning and getting blood work and on call for an egg retrieval. And so that was also a fascinating time to have discussion. And you know what I found? I was honest about it and we figured it out and it all worked out. With my team, I've had um, team members come in the past and ask for something and be really, really scared. And I'm like, this is not a vent. Go take care of yourself. It's fine. So oftentimes when you think you're being bold, you're not even being that bold. You're just being real and human. And um, it, it usually works out. Great. Hey, Carolyn, there was um, some discussion earlier in the chat about what it means to have it all. Um, so if you want to take a minute to define what that means for you and for the group. Yeah, I think it means something different for everybody. Um, for me, um, when I think of, at least when I've talked to other people, when I was reading about it, having it all meant the amazing career, the perfect family, you're in amazing shape all of the time. You look put together. You have a beautiful house that's clean. Um, you're making home cooked meals. You know, like this is like, it, I'm like, in the heck does that happen? And so for me, having it all for me is, okay, um, is everybody clothed? Are we bathed? <laughs> like simple things. Um, do we have a house, you know, that is in clean, good enough shape? Some days having it all for me means making a nice home cooked meal. I've made one the last three nights, which is shocking, but we will probably order out for the next three nights now. Um, so having it all is just trying to figure out each day, what can I do? And um, how do I get through the day? Um, it does mean for me having a career, being a mom, um, having enough money to um, have some great experiences and travel, and have, being healthy, having my health and my loved ones around me. That's what it means for me to have it all. Um, outside of you know some core things, obviously, when it comes to my values and my faith, et cetera. But those are, that's what it means for me to have it all. Um, and I had to kind of this disillusionment of looking amazing every day, the house being perfect, um, having getting it right every day at work. There are some days where I just had a bad day. I didn't show up the, the way I could have. I acknowledge it. I learn from it and I move on. Um, and just being aware that perfection doesn't exist. And I think when you get to a certain level and as you get very ambitious, we're often type A people and we're harder on ourselves than we need to be. That is so helpful. And honestly, I am so struck by this conversation. It's going to be helpful to have this conversation with my own team. Um, so I, uh, someone asked the question, if we're going to put the slides online, yes, we're going to put the slides online Hi. and the recording of this. <laughs> I'm um, good. How are you? And I think we have someone just to remind everyone to be on mute um, if you are as well. So, um, but I think uh, one of the things, I guess, just to close the loop on that is that, you know, I don't have all always for my team conversations, but I'm grateful, Caroline, for your tips, because at least certainly this week, I will have a really good nugget about balance and really looking, I think, for me at that learning agility um, is going to be something that I'm going to talk through with my own team. 
Great. And there's lots of really good information out there about learning agility. Corn Ferry has great information on their site. Um, happy to share more with you, Claire, offline. There's four quadrants to learning agility, and it goes deep in different areas. Uh, but there's a lot you can play with in that space. And it's a huge, huge aspect of interviews and what people are looking for when they think about executives. They might not even know it's all learning agility, but learning agility is a trait um, that is key as you get more senior. Absolutely. And I just want to pause and ask anyone else if they have any good stories on work-life balance. You know, please know that we we welcome this as a conversation if there's things that you want to also offer. So we'll just pause for that as well. I would love if somebody could give me a tip they've learned along the way. I think coming from someone who doesn't have children, didn't want children, um, sometimes I do feel like those of us who don't have kids and choose not to do get more work sometimes yeah. or those who don't attend faith services on Sundays do more work. Um, so I think that's a balance too for women who don't have children and have those same needs. Um, but I also think that what we like to say in our, our work at the university, UNC Wilmington, what we like to say in our team is like, it's a work-life blend because we're not ever really going to balance it perfectly. <laughs> Yeah. And so how do you, um, you know, try to merge those two things and and still practice self-care and do the right things for you? And and I think knowing that it's never going to be balanced. And so I kind of don't like that term. Yeah. For that reason. No, I like the word blend, Amy. Um, yeah. I um, also, Amy, I, you know, I didn't know if I was going to be able to have kids and I debated it for a period of my life. And um, I think there is so much pressure on women uh, or judgment on women if you choose not to go down that path. But then also, um, I think sometimes it's judgment on like, oh, it must be nice you get to go work out today or you have this or that, you know, can you take the call instead? Can you do this instead? And um, it, it can feel like there's more put on you or that you feel an obligation to take on more. And that's what I think I heard you say, yeah. And I think we've got a hand raised. Um, correct me if I pronounce it wrong, but um, Cynthia, did you have? Yeah, the, the, you pronounce correctly. <laughs> so I, uh, what you said resonated to me very uh, aligned with my thoughts and my experience with uh, work-life balance. And I can tell you because today I'm a grandmother. I raised two wonderful men, and I. I, I can, when I look uh, for my life, my past life, I say, okay, I did everything I want to do. And what resonates to, to, to me is about the, if you can call this the completeness of the being, when you look to yourself, uh, physical, emotionally, uh, spiritually, uh, mentally, it's how you can find the balance. And... I, when I looked at one of the most uh, uh, difficult uh, phases of my life in terms of uh, 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 professionally speaking was also one of the wonderful time because I started doing meditation. I was trying to be a complete being, uh, doing the physicals, trying to... Um, to, to, to manage my emotional better and everything worked well. And that's what I think this is, this is resonate for me. And I think this is one of the most important part because when you find this, this, uh, this completude in your being, you can be, uh, you can separate things in the right, in the right time, in the right moments, in the, the, the right perspective. That's what I, I, I want to share with you. I love that. Thank you. And Carolyn, it looks like we have a few additional questions in the chat. So the first one is from Lisa Hillary T. It says, values can feel like, like big, heavy things at times. Can you give examples of healthy values when somebody is struggling with balance and challenge? Um, so, well, the value, so the values itself, like when you think of two core values, you're like, how do you get to two? Like you can come up with a list of like 25, right? 
and that can be a bit intimidating. So I just start by writing down your values. It could be it could be a list of 30 and then start to see where there's some themes. So that's kind of the first part. But um, can you give me examples of healthy values when someone's struggling with balance and challenges? Um, I don't know if it's a value per se because it depends on how you define value, but uh, boundary is an incredibly important word to me when you're struggling with challenges and things coming at you and figuring out how to blend or balance depending on the word that you use. Uh, boundaries are hugely important. I, uh, I have found that I struggled at times to have boundaries and say no or not to commit to something. And um, it was a big problem for me because it kept catching up and burning me out. And um, I had to figure out some different boundaries. So that's a very healthy one. And then if you're going to do nothing else for yourself when you're in the middle of the midst of the chaos and, and really struggling with a lot of different things you're trying to figure out at once. Um, number one, I, I think, is some of the physical sleep. Um, try to eat healthy just keep a few things in check in that regard will help regulate emotions and being able to think clearly. Great. Uh, the next question is, how do you handle a situation when there's a meeting you really want or need to attend, but your child is unexpectedly home with you? Well, I mean, this is an interesting question for me today <laughs> since um, our child care um, is unfortunately not here today. Um, you do whatever you need to do, Sarah. You do whatever you need to do. So it may be a little bit more screen time. It may be um, putting them in front of Sesame Street a little bit longer. It could be as simple as just being honest with the people on the call that, hey, you know, you might hear some background noise. I'm doing my best. Um, this is an important conversation for us to have. But uh, unfortunately, I had a uh, child care challenge today, so I'm trying to juggle and just be honest about that. Um, but you do what you need to do. Uh, we're probably, you know, all have got a little bit more um, snack than she needed this morning. She watched an episode, she watched an extra episode of Sesame Street, which we normally don't do. Uh, I pulled out a toy that she was supposed to get for Christmas. She got today. So you do what you need to do. Thank and you. Um, while we pause and wait, um, because this is a great discussion and these questions are wonderful, um, we have a um, process that we do here. We end right at one. Um, so I will jump in and give a bit of a meeting, bit of a pitch for our next meeting now, and then we can continue the conversation as, as people join the chat. So um, I hope that you guys will all join us on Tuesday, January 17th. We're going to put marketing out about this on our LinkedIn page. And I know we see some new faces. So I ask that you join us there for upcoming events, um, thought leadership articles, um, quotes, and good reminders. Um, but soon we're going to start marketing this event. It's an amazing panel um, with four leaders from the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. And we're going to discuss how leaders can empower women and minorities in the workplace. So it's going to be a really dynamic conversation. I hope you'll join us and just pencil it in now, Tuesday, January 17th at noon. Um, you know, I want to say one thing, Claire, as we were waiting to see if there's anything else that comes in, that um, I want to make sure it's clear that it, all women go through challenges like this. It doesn't matter whether you're a mom or not or whether you're at a certain leadership position or not, um, we are always juggling more complexity in our life as we age. Uh, we have, whether it's parents, complexity of friend dynamics, complexity of financial situations, um, things just get more complicated. And so I think it's important that we all think about our own mental, emotional, physical health, because those things can go out the window as more and more stress gets piled on. And unfortunately, unfortunately, um, and if this is, I don't want to stereotype an entire gender, but we, we as women take on a lot of that and some of those dynamics. And so it's just really important that you check in on yourself because you don't even necessarily know how you come across to other people, uh, but that stress can come through, that anxiety can come through, and we really need to think through that and how we show up. Uh, with others and you if you aren't checking in with yourself you don't necessarily know how you're coming across to others
that was actually a question, Caroline, that I was going to ask too, is how do you manage guilt? Whether it's, for me, it's mom guilt, um, but I'm sure it could be guilt of like, you know, spending time with your parents and other, you know, work. And so when you're trying to find that time for yourself, how do you manage those guilty feelings when you feel like you should be doing other priorities that are in your life? Um, I don't have an easy answer for this one, and I hope somebody can give me that advice. I think that um, I always have guilt uh, at it's, it's some level. I just try to put it to the back of my head and say, you know what, I'm doing the best I can. Um, and I try to create more laughter in my day on the days where I'm feeling particularly bad. So I might turn on some music and do some silly dancing, even if it's by myself. Sometimes I just try to like lighten the mood so it doesn't feel so heavy because the guilt's usually just self-inflicted and isn't that big of a deal. So I just try to find other ways to um, not think about it, to be quite honest, because I don't know if I really ever get rid of guilt. Um, it's there no matter what. I think it's very natural, Becca, that you either feel like you're depriving work, you're depriving some family member, you're depriving your partner, like they're, because it's impossible to give yourself to everybody equally every day. Yeah. We've got a, a great comment here um, about repeating the airplane mantra, just seeing that. Um, so help yourself before you help others. I, I think that is a great, thank you, Allie. Um, and I, I recognize um, in our conversation about guilt and time management that um, everyone could probably use some additional time back. Um, so just really grateful for everyone <laughs> attending. Caroline, thank you for passing along your wisdom. It is um, really helpful. And I know for me, this is a session I've been excited about for weeks because these are tips that I need to put into action in my own life. Um, and I know that others um, certainly feel the same just by the chat and, and seeing all the nodding and smiles from your session today. So. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, and please join us on Tuesday, January 17th, if you're free. And then do follow us on LinkedIn. We'll be posting the session. We'll be posting the slides and, and continuing the conversation. We'd love to hear your thoughts um, on LinkedIn. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Nice seeing everybody. Bye-bye.